Good evening. I am Richard S. McGee, and you are looking at the learning tree. I have some principal, principal people who know all about politics, who are going to enlighten you on all the subjects about politics. Uh, did I cut that too high? Is that too heavy? <laughs> on my right, Jean Charles, who was the president of the League of Women Voters for Wellesley. Joellen Toussaint, who was a past president for the League of Voters for Wellesley. And Marlena. Yes. O'Brien. Yes, O'Brien. Yes. I knew that. She thought she had to tell me. Who was the first vice president for the League of Women Voters for, for Wellesley? Um, the Massive. Mm -hmm. Don't win only tonight. <laughs> Why not forever? Starting with you, uh, Marlene, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came to Wellesley and the League of Women Voters. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I um, grew up in New York, went to college and law school here in Massachusetts, okay. and then worked in New York on Wall Street for a while, and then with my husband and three children, moved up here to Wellesley. Mm -hmm. We're delighted to be here, and uh, while at home raising our children found the League a very attractive opportunity for becoming civically engaged. I had worked um, s some of my time in my career in New York mm -hmm. in, um, for elected officials, for Liz Holtzman and then Rudy Giuliani, who are from different parties, and I've always been nonpartisan myself, and I uh, found the League um, with its uh, devotion to civic engagement and voter education, as well as some advocacy, a very um, attractive uh, place to be mm -hmm. for investing some time and effort. And with marvelous uh, league members, um, it was also incredibly fun. And Joellen and Jean are perfect examples of the quality of uh, thought, mm -hmm. the quality of women that um, come to the league to work. Well, what's your basic uh, practice in law? Uh, it was federal tax law, federal tax. Uh, primarily, but mm -hmm. I also did um, mergers and acquisitions on the corporate side, mm -hmm. and then went into um, government where I was involved in different way, you know, with different aspects of the law. Um, I was deputy general counsel to Mayor Giuliani on children's services, social services, dealt with contracts and litigation, mm -hmm. and uh, all sorts of aspects of the law there, and before that with Liz Holtzman basically handling the city's money and pension funds and uh, legal issues that came up with respect to those. And how long have you been in Wellesley? Eighteen years. Eighteen years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you having fun in Wellesley? Very much so, <laughs> as I can tell you are as well. Jo Ellen? Well, I was a little girl, I think, but not really. Uh, probably over 40 years ago when we moved to Wellesley. Mm -hmm. um, at that particular time, we then had four children, and I was looking for something that might engage my brain. I picked up the Townsman one day, and uh, the League invited people to come to what they then called the International Relations Committee, and they were discussing international relations. So I got in my car and went over there that night, and that was the beginning. A few years later, I became president of the League. I've made many what friends. What years were you president? Uh, in the 70s, Richard. 70s, all yes. right. Yes, and I've made many friends. I've certainly stayed educated mm -hmm. and uh, allowed to be still interested in um, international relations, which is really my forte, I guess. Mm -hmm. And what are you doing for fun these days? Not much, Richard. You got any <laughs> ideas? <laughs> I come to your World of Wealthy events. That's, that's my fun. Oh, okay. okay. Good answer. <laughs> All right. And have you enjoyed your stay in 40 years in Wellesley? I have. I have. Well, I'm about to catch up with you. I'm in the 36th year. All so right. I'm, I'm catching up. Uh, wait for me, will you? I will. Okay. And Jean? What about you? Well, I moved to Wellesley in 1960. Okay. And um, when I first became a homeowner, I figured that one way to get to know where your money went as taxpayer, as a taxpayer, would be to join the League of Women Voters. Okay. Well, my mother had c told somebody in Wellesley that um, I should be a member of the League, and so one of the um, members of the League came and called upon me. 
that was how you got new members. People from the board would call upon new residents. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I joined the league before I had children in the school and studied with the um, education committee. And uh, I think we were talking about kindergarten at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was appropriate for you know the little ones so that they would go to kindergarten and all that sort of thing. So that's how I started. And mm -hmm. then I, I, I didn't stop. <laughs> and so we've been here for a long time. And now we're in, um, we moved in 1967 to John's family's house. So we're, we're a long time in Wildside, okay. and obviously we've enjoyed being here. And, uh, you, you're involved in more than just the league. What, I what, am, is, what are yeah, some of the other no. your activities? Well, another one is a scholarship group called the Tau Beta Beta, hmm. and that's a scholarship for girls who have graduated from either Wellesley, Newton, or Brookline schools, high hmm. school. And our group um, has a fund where we support 18 girls with scholarships for all four years of their college. We don't give them a full scholarship, but we give mm -hmm. them a tidy sum. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's another focus. What do you I call have. a tidy sum? Um, 3,000 the first year, maybe up to 400, and, or 4,000 to 5,000 the Is that last year. per year? It moves up each year, yeah, oh, for okay. each girl. So we've got a good endowment. We're mm -hmm. And um, who knows what the market will do these days, but so okay. far we've been able to support um, 18 mm -hmm. girls this year. 18. And we, keep, we, we mentor them. We have a committee where they talk to the girls and get to know them and help them. How do you them. raise your funds? Um, it's, it's, this is not it's, a part of the league. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's asking. It's, it's members support it. Membership. We okay. don't have a fundraising um, All right. situation. Well, that's the same with the League of Women Voters. Right. We've had fundraising events for the League of Women Voters over the years, and one of them was an energy weekend uh, way back in 1980, around 80, 1980, mm -hmm. where we did a um, solar house, and we had various um, energy-efficient systems to look at in different houses around mm -hmm. Wellesley and Natick, and um, had a lecture on how to be uh, more energy-efficient. And that was a few years ago, so we're oh, okay. we were ahead of the game, maybe, or in the beginning with others. If the, what are some of your other activities? And um, I should say, well, I curl. <laughs> and not many people know what curling is, but that's, I was in Canada the last few days, curling with other women. Mm -hmm. So it's just fun and games. And, uh, <laughs> How about you, Joellen? What are you involved in other than the league? Well, probably not much, Richard. Yeah, not much. We're back to here. <laughs> I, work, I work at the library, which I enjoy. Okay. I enjoy uh, being with people. I, I don't think I could ever work in an office all by myself. Um, so I take a, a pay cut to okay. be involved with people. Before that, I worked at the bookstall in Wellesley. So books have always been mm -hmm. a big part of my life. Okay. And Marlene? What are the activities you're involved in other than the league? Well, my children have kept me very busy over the years. Um, two of them are involved in fencing and the third in performing arts. And uh, so that has been very consuming. And okay. I've also been involved in the past in uh, judging figure skating and uh, involved in uh, Harvard alumni activities. And currently I'm sitting on the Board of Governors of the Harvard yeah, Club of Boston. Fencing is a rather, rather unusual activity, isn't it? It's unusual, but we happen to have the, uh, the men's U.S. Olympic coach uh, just a couple miles down the road in Natick right now, mm. and he's uh, brought our children and many, many others along. All right. Uh, either of you can answer this question. Uh, what is your membership now in the Wellesley chapter of, of the league? Well, we've got that. Uh, we, we have about 100 or so members as well as supporters. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been pretty steady for quite a few years. Way back when, before women really worked outside the home for pay, mm -hmm. we and we weren't we were the only um, group in town to do reasonable, interesting uh, studies. Mm -hmm. um, we had around 600 members, mm -hmm. but then we have all these other competing organizations. So the single there issue, are a lot. single there issue are a few. organizations, yes. Right. You can't, it's hard to do everything, and some people like to concentrate on one thing. Have men begun to infiltrate your We've had a few men. All right. Over the years, we had one man who had 
been out of work for a while, and I think he had been a teacher, and he'd helped us with the education study. Mm -hmm. So he was on the board and chairman of the education committee at one time. That was many years back. Let's look at the league from the national position. Uh, you know how many chapters there are in the country? Yeah. Yes, we have. Yeah, I've sat on the national board. We have over 800 chapters. 800 chapters. Mm -hmm. Are they all mm -hmm. located in major or just any town or city? Interestingly city. enough, um, there are leagues in all 50 states, mm -hmm. and there are at least several local leagues within those states. There are more and more members at large. That's a new trend. But within the local leagues, um, the membership varies. Sometimes the state capital, which may have so many uh, competing organizations involved in civic engagement and voter education, mm -hmm. um, not that anything is quite like the league, but um, have those, uh, there'll be larger groups of members outside in the chapters outside the capital. Mm -hmm. um, this is true in Pennsylvania and a number of other states. Um, and it's true here in Boston. In fact, if you know that the Wellesley League is one of the largest and oldest leagues in is the country. Right? How old is and it? How the old state, is the Wellesley um, League? We're, uh, we're uh, 19, in the 80s. 1938 mm -hmm. it started. 38? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then Massachusetts is one of the oldest leagues in the country. And, uh, mm. you know, so following in the footsteps, as uh, your viewers may know, the league is a three-tiered organization with mm -hmm. national, state, and local leagues each supporting the other, with the core being the local leagues, which are the grassroots, which makes them so attractive. Do you know the so population attractive. nationally of, those, of all your leagues, by any chance? Mm -hmm. oh, well, we have about 130,000 mm -hmm. members and supporters. Nationally, I mean. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 130,000, yeah. Oh. Okay, I thought you said 135. <laughs> <laughs> 130,000, all right. How about that? Tell me a little bit how the league began. What is its history? What is its background? Well, once the suffrage <laughs> Once the suffrage happened in 1920, all right. then the League of Women Voters nationally uh, uh, started, right? 18 years to get off the ground, huh? And um, so, well, Wellesley wasn't, you know, on the bottom rung right away, but mm -hmm. um, it took a while for the women to understand maybe what it meant to have the vote. Mm -hmm. Evidently in Wellesley at one time there were a whole, uh, quite a few women who did not want to have the vote. Is that right? And there was an article in, in the Townsman what, last week. What period week of time was that? What in the 1910s and teens. Is that right? Probably around the First World War time oh, that my they thought that would, you know, change everything if women could vote. Yeah. Heaven's sake! So, <laughs> and it has. Yeah. Well, obviously. And they're the a formidable uh, force, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And a lot of women help the men and what to do. <laughs> <laughs> in everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so th this this chapter. Now, what is the major function of the League of Women Voters? Uh, why do you need a League of Women Voters? You don't have a League of Men Voters, or, or, or Black Voters, or Hispanic Voters. Why well, the idea was when women got the vote, therefore, yeah. they should be educated and they should learn how, what the issues were and how they should be informed, therefore, be able to vote intelligently. All right, let's that go there. Theory. Let's go there. What is your educational process? What is it that you do to educate women to to vote in the manner which is uh, appropriate. Well, now of course we do a lot of studies about okay. issues, and that's that was that came about after they started the league. But um, we have candidates' nights for local elections. Okay. We also have had congressional and senatorial um, debates. Mm -hmm. So that's that's for the public. We've had forums. Mm -hmm. and what yeah. else? We We've have talks. publications. I think most importantly, okay. yeah. um, in terms of concrete. Uh, you know, progress that we've made in educating people and what they credit the league with. Mm -hmm. um, it tends to be the election guides that appear in the Wellesley Townsman, which um, Kathy Bronowis has been very generous in helping support the publication of. Um, we've had Vote 411. These are some of your publications here on the table, right, aren't right, they? Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Yes. So this, this, this is one of the, of this is our election guide that will, this okay. kind of thing will come out next, um, next um, Thursday. Oh, That's okay. two years old, but we'll have one coming out you, this you, year. Do you publish this annually? Yes. All right, every, not annually, but in every uh, 
election? For the Wanna town elections. Town elections. And for state, the state league will do that sort of thing. Okay. We don't, we don't get involved You just do this directly. for the town? Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is 2013. Right. You're not putting out anything for 2016. We are on Thursday, March 10th. Are you? March 10th. All we'll right. We'll what will that cover? This, um, all the people who are running for election or re-election mm -hmm. and um, including town meeting members um, including and, town, and meeting. town meeting members mm -hmm. who yes okay so mm -hmm. you can and you can see their um, attendance okay but, but the way that the Wellesley League I might say has distinguished itself uh, within not only Massachusetts but in the country we were one of the first to adopt um, vote 411 which is a nationally sponsored uh, program that allows local leagues to ask candidates questions and then present their responses side by side so that voters can review them and become educated about the positions in a very neutral, nonpartisan way mm -hmm. before entering the voting booth. We think this is an important service, so much so that now um, within the state of Massachusetts, a donor has come through and funded um, all local leagues' use of Vote 411. Mm -hmm. So we're very pleased about that. We've been at the forefront of that, so with the publications as well as um, electronically and helping appeal to the younger generation that tends to uh, receive its information more via iPhone than newsprint. Um, and so we're very pleased about the progress we've made in that regard and social inspiring media. other media. Yes. 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 That, that, that seems that's, to be driving this well. election. Uh, that's kind of kind of that's going on currently. We well, what's, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying that we also uh, take what we call positions, Richard. That comes after a lot of study. Um, we do pick topics at l local, state, and national areas. And we have a group that studies, reads all about those positions, and then we bring them to our membership. Who and formulates the positions? Do they for get formulated at the, at the top and trickle no, down? No, or no, do you no, no, formulate no. them locally and they go up? Well, there are some positions which are local, mm -hmm. pertaining only to Wellesley. Mm -hmm. There are some that are state, pertaining only to Massachusetts, and okay. then there are some that are national. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, we act on those positions. Sometimes we vote in that town meeting on local, school, mm -hmm. maybe, nice. uh, that type mm -hmm. of thing. And then we do have people in Washington that right. are informed and go and speak to senators and representatives on league positions. Uh, I understand that uh, coming forth in the forthcoming uh, town meeting that there's going to be a, an article on the new uh, the manager, manager, no, town manager, town manager mm -hmm. change. Is that coming up? You guys have anything to do with that? Do you? That, that, will go to the, that will go that? to the voters, Richard. Huh? That that will go out that's to not, the voters. That's not coming to the town meeting. Already did. It, oh, the, and what did town well, meeting do? Town meeting only voted to put it on the ballot oh. for the voters, to uh, to decide. Now explain that to me. That's an interesting uh, concept there. Well, town meeting. How, how does it how does it trickle through from the committee to the town meeting and to the state? How does that Town meeting just couldn't go ahead and approve it and say, uh, or is that? I think some, they, some they, I think they wanted it uh, to be decided by everyone in Wellesley. This is a procedure. The yeah. town meeting had yeah. to pass it or to put it on the ballot, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. the voters have to pass it. So in in, in reality, the voters, the, the citizens are in charge. Yeah, what, that, what, that what, what, what makes that necessary, though? That's what I'm trying to figure out. It must be a statute. Um, oh. It has to be a state law that okay. to change oh, okay. things. You have to go. Change government. The voters, the voters <laughs> have to approve. Okay. All right. There are times when things are put on the ballot for our local voters to approve. It's not necessary for it to go to them, but um, the, in the wisdom of the selectmen, they decide we'd like to hear from the voters and have them weigh in and decide. Are oh, you telling so, me this is optional? So, in some cases, okay. so when I was on the Board of Assessors, um, I was asked by the, our board was asked by the selectmen to develop senior tax relief um, proposals. Mm -hmm. And so we did that, and then, um, even though it wasn't necessary, Harriet Warshaw, to her great credit, said, um, we'd like this to go out to the voters to be on the ballot and have the voters approve. I thought that was very commendable, so that we had that civic support. 
you know, and civic engagement is really what the League is all about, so we applaud efforts like that. <laughs> Very interesting. Now, all this other stuff you have down here, what does this do for us? Um, that doesn't do anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> these are, this is a Wellesley handbook that has been um, one of our um, prime educational tools for mm -hmm. the public. And way back in the beginning, I think we had a Know Your Town, and it was information that would be good for citizens to know who to call for what. Oh, and okay. so it has all the um, phone numbers and um, records of how, how the town works, municipal light plant and who it is and who, who you can call and how they work, uh, public schools and how the uh, school committee works. Okay. That sort of thing is in here. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then we have a precinct map, so you, if you know, you know, it, you don't know your precinct necessarily, but you have I a map. I think I get lost out. in well mm -hmm. I can look at And uh, exactly. So we've done these publications over the years. Okay. And they have evolved from and being uh, one time we had right. a. Um, and how about this one? And that's Member's handbook. That explains how the league works. Oh, does it? Yes. So well, we okay. also supplied uh, Richard this handbook to the uh, real estate oh. people in Wellesley. So when they sold a house, they could give that to the people to welcome what is them. This is and that's for the. This um, is handed out by uh, real estate brokers. No, 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 no. no. League of Women Voters does this for the town meeting members. Oh. And every new town meeting member gets one. This yes. something new? No, we've no. been doing that for years. You got well, it. I'm in town meeting. Got, I never got, got this. You got it years ago, Richard. You just <laughs> about. In ancient times. Right. <laughs> well, you know, it occurs to me that perhaps we should ask town meeting members who've been around for a while whether they would like a new copy um, because we do revise it from time to time and yeah, I think we yeah. have Donna Kemp to credit for um, yes. much of the town government handed book. She's been yeah. valuable. She's also a former president of the local and the state league. Who is this? Donna, Donna Kemp. Kemp. Oh, okay. All right. I know her. Yes. This, what the Wells handbook do for me? And this is, this is, okay, that is the same idea well, as this. It's just uh, a different version. That was 1990, and this is oh, more this recent. Oh, this is my year, huh? And so, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So every five, ten years, we update facts and figures because, well, the schools have changed lots of times. Okay. And maybe some other things have changed, too. Marlene, coming back to you, you said that you, are, you that the league interviews candidates. Uh, at what level does the league do <coughs> candidate interviews? And uh, oh. I, what, we ask questions in writing, receive oh, okay. responses, and generally um, without editing, um, unless there's a good reason to do so for mm -hmm. length or what have you, um, we publish those responses side by side so that the voters can compare. And uh, the league itself gets together. It's one of the uh, fun activities of the league, I think, that um, a group of us will get together and think, what kinds of questions do we want to ask? Of these candidates. So the questions are designed by a group, and you do you do you send these to all candidates, local and national, or just some candidates? No, the local league would send to the local, state to state, national, okay. national to. National. You don't get involved in the national process. Not generally. I mean, there are times when that can happen. All right. <clears throat> but um, you know, we have, and we. I think one of uh, the major. Um, and we have Wellesley Media to thank. One of the uh, major things we can do also is put on debates. Mm -hmm. And we had a few years ago a debate between Joseph Kennedy and Sean Bielet for the 4th Congressional District. We drew about 1,200 people to Wellesley College, mm -hmm. to the auditorium, and uh, Wellesley Media filmed it. It was, and so did other, um, you know, <laughs> other media. Okay. It was fantastic. And I think that, people, huh? mm -hmm. yeah, and I think that was a very well, good example. A couple of years ago, okay. it was, um, was a very good example um, of the difference that a league moderator and a league um, organized debate makes. When you see what's happening today with the, uh, with the um, character, the nature of presidential debates, mm -hmm. um, not talking through a moderator, you know, personal attacks on one another, untimed responses, um, sometimes what may fairly be called inequitable you know, time given to um, some candidates over others. Um, I think people come to realize how valuable uh, the league approach is. Mm -hmm. Very even-handed, nonpartisan. 
<coughs> and fair, and uh, promoting civil discourse, which is something I think is uh, <laughs> very much needed, and the League is very involved, um, both at the younger levels of our populations and among voting age citizens. Yeah, how, how do you go about uh, disseminating uh, that information or bringing people together to to understand the, the need for change and approach hmm. to subjects that, well, that, are, that are... We have moderator training on the state level mm -hmm. and it, they have a set of ideas mm -hmm. and they are trained and they do a very good job, Richard. I'm mm -hmm. not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when, when things are not falling into the the correct stream of, of, of discourse, uh, you, you, the League of Women come together and they try to help find some way to shape this into a, a better conversation, is that right? We do try to do that. We did that, one, uh, one example recently was with the um, split tax rate debate we had here in this town. We saw there was something less than civil going on at a particular meeting and said, you know, the League can have a role in helping educate the public on the difference um, and the implications of a split tax rate. What kinds of considerations? Looking at the history and making it very neutral. Others asked us to um, allow their advocates to speak and we said we'd like to make this something more academic. So we invited professors um, to chase from Wellesley College and uh, someone from Harvard and someone from, I think, uh, uh, BU or the Kennedy School. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yes, it was, it was. And it was very um, educational. Everyone came away understanding better what the fundamentals were, the fundamental differences between having a single and split rate. You've got a town like Winchester that right. has the flip of most towns and yet also is successful in having a higher rate for residential than for commercial. Most, most uh, other towns in Massachusetts either are, you know, have the same rate or higher, you know, mm -hmm. or higher on the commercial and so we were glad to be able to ha we saw there was a need for that and um, had a very good program mm -hmm. do you you i know you're local but do you have any uh approach to national con uh, contest do you advise or we never support candidates no uh, not, not not the candidate the but do you advise the on they, the um, League of Women yeah. Voters did used to give debates for presidential candidates, mm -hmm. and then the uh, media took over mm -hmm. somehow, and um, the How League... How long ago was that? Quite a few years. The League yeah. lost its um, uh, ability to run a standard debate years ago because I don't know if it was money or if it was... Um, Power. I don't know what well, happened. I think there were a number of issues involved, but uh, uh, from uh, the um, from what uh, longtime league members say is really the resources needed to put on a national presidential That's debate right. really tied up uh, the staff of the national league um, for at least half a year mm. and certainly tied up a huge amount of funds. So it, it was a, a major commitment, but I think what we're doing at the state and local level is equally as important. And um, we certainly, at the local level, as grassroots, you know, the heart of the league, do provide um, organizations. Most of us are involved in many other organizations, and we do provide them with our input, you know, from the league, okay. and what we think they might be asking candidates and so on. Uh, what do you think of the way that moderators are handling the current debates. <laughs> they're trying, Richard, I think. What? They're, they're not league trained. <laughs> but I think people like excitement these days. Uh -huh. And um, anyway, it's an awkward situation. Uh, do, you, do you agree with some of the questioning that's being in use in some of these debates? Or the manner in which they've been? It's not league-like. <laughs> it's what? It's not league-like. No. Okay. <laughs> I would, I guess I would be more outspoken on it. I totally uh, am appalled by uh, the forum, the manner in which questions are asked to some extent in a very provocative way, you know, clearly to incite the candidates to respond a certain way that will provide for sound bites that are good for the media but not good for the voting, to educate the voting public. Mm -hmm. I think we need to have more even-handed questioning and um, question that um, focuses, that focuses, yes, that focuses on the substantive yeah. issues 
facing this country. Well, we not miss on a lot of that in the debates because we get uh, things that uh, trigger vigorous but uh, not informative responses. So, uh, yeah, yes, so. and primarily they come um, from direct address uh, among the candidates of each other rather than through the moderator, which is a main principle of uh, league debate policy, mm -hmm. as Jean alluded to. You speak through the moderator, you know, formally explaining your position. Mm -hmm. The other responds formally, all timed, to provide the substance, you know, of their views that's necessary so you can judge how they will be. Uh, meaningless banter and personal attacks have no place in debates from our point of view. Is there any, any way that the general public can influence this whole course of action? Hmm. Get involved. Get what? involved. Get informed, Richard. Yes. Yeah, but I, that, I that, that's believe, not going to change the way that. I still believe this one person can make a difference. Um, the one thing that's going on now is a lot more people have registered to vote. A lot so more. So that's an important thing to do. Yes. Yes. But uh, even that, uh, my, my, my question centered around the moderator type of thing. How, what, oh, okay. Is there anything that, uh, any influence can be made by general public? Well, I think they're in the entertainment business, Richard. I think we have to take that into account. Okay. What, what, what Marlena says is, is true, that the league would have a, a certainly a better debate. However, I believe the channels have to weigh the entertainment value along with informing the public. That becomes very, the, very significant. Well. Uh, ratings. That's true, yes. Yeah, they're having an awful lot of debates. I don't know that anything <laughs> different is going to be said, uh, which I find very interesting. Uh, I find very interesting the whole discourse, but the, the war. The war and is going on, and uh, there, there's nobody that's going to call pull the plug. <laughs> well, I think uh, the ratings of the debates haven't been that high, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, so I think that be, people though. are beginning to yeah. um, tune out and realize that this is for entertainment, as Joe Allen mm -hmm. says. And mm -hmm. if they want uh, real information, they need to turn to sources like Vote Four One One, and uh, like you know, nonpartisan. Um, side by side comparisons of statements, you know, made by the candidates, and uh, I think that will be a better, yeah. a better foundation for making a decision. Yeah, I, I, I suppose you can respond to the question about uh, folks dropping out and li limiting the field of people who are running. Uh, is that a good idea, a good concept, and how does how does that come about? Not that, really. that individual initiative? Not really where the league is coming from. What, where the league is coming from is to, to influence people to run for office. Okay. And a lot of our, our members do that mm -hmm. after a few years in the league. They, they've been to a lot of town meeting, committee meetings, and they've settled on a particular board or committee that they'd like to be on. We have a lot of league members who have served the town of Wellesley mm -hmm. well. In fact, Alice Peisch, who's a state representative, uh, um, was very active in the league and then active on uh, as a town clerk and then moved on. And we have, uh, that's true, Joelle, and we have many. And we're very disappointed right now that um, here's yet another year where we have uh, no contested elections in this town. Uh, and we'd like to encourage your viewers to <laughs> consider seriously running. Now, we on March 10th will have a uh, meet the candidates evening so people will get to meet those who are basically guaranteed um, office but we need more people to run it why, not only why do not people why people don't people run they, they don't want a contest and i can sympathize in a way with that because they, they think don't want a contest right <laughs> people don't mind serving but they don't want to fight for it maybe oh, i no. think it waxes and wanes uh, also, Richard, I think there are years when you have nobody running, and then you have years where a lot of the offices are contested. I think the um, we as a league have studied schools, for instance, over the years, and when we study a school subject, our membership goes way up. Hmm. So, 
it is something why is that town, well this town is very interested in a good education for their children yeah ok so you know it does, if, if, if uh, what happens if nobody if you have an office an opening in an office and nobody runs for it does the incumbent just hang in there and, <laughs> well <laughs> sometimes maybe but other times there are people who will go around and try to find somebody find because candidates. there have well town some town um, precincts have been uh, meeting extra people and so they'll have to call up friends to say we have an opening do come and consider running for town meeting um, some precincts have had more of a problem with getting town, mem town meeting members than others. Well, so all of this is volunteer effort. Yes, and exactly. I, from my understanding, the town has, been, has begun to suffer from lack of folks who want to volunteer for anything in the town. Is that about the size of it? I don't, I don't know if people lack the volunteer spirit, but they you do lack time, you know, especially as we were talking about two-income couples, you know, it's less free time for volunteer service, but we have a very um, wonderful um, group of people volunteering for boards. I think we have several hundred um, people out in a town as, you know, with only, well, I know for the Board of Assessors, about 8,300 households. Um, mm -hmm. We have a tremendous um, spirit of volunteerism, people willing to come forward, but there is something relating to not, not wanting to... Um, not wanting to um, fight for a particular office. Or see, or see someone willing to serve, the neighbors willing to serve, they'll say, okay, why don't you and I'll do it another year. But really in order for the, you know, for the quality of um, decision making, it's really important for people to get out and at least mm -hmm. voice their concerns and be civically engaged. And that's one of our core missions, isn't it? Yes, we should do more of that because I think there's a certain number of people who are coming into town who might not have been from New England Mm -hmm. Therefore, they do not know the concept of town meeting, ah. and they're used to having counties, county government, and mm -hmm. everything is done without the volunteers. Mm -hmm. So they're surprised when they realize that town meeting happens, and uh, so that's part of our education that maybe we should do a better job. Yeah, but I also mm -hmm. notice that Walter does a lot of recycling of people. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're some of those. The RDF of Town yeah. Hall. I, I, should also, I should also mention that, um, well, I've been recycled as a um, league president, and I have a co-president, Irene Flint. Yeah. So I should mention that I'm a co-president. We, we, in the past, we have also run um, meetings on how to run for office, so that if anybody might be interested. You don't do that anymore? No, we haven't done it lately. Three but years, we have done every it. so many yeah. years, our, the moderator yeah. will do it, mm -hmm. or um, some of the yeah. So usually it's the moderator who will try to get somebody more interested in running right. for office. Mm -hmm. Let's think about that again. Mm -hmm. how, do you, and, uh, how do you how do you go about that process of teaching people how to run for office? Uh, well, nitty gritty. Oh, you weren't there when I ran. <laughs> uh, well, we tell you how many signatures you need to get, how, that many, type, how many signatures you need okay. to get to get on the ballot, for instance, that type of information. Okay. It's relatively easy to run for office in this town. Much yeah. easier than people think in mm. general. And people also think that you need to be a um, town meeting member in order to run for a town board. This is another popular no. misconception. You do not. Okay. And now, people who are really interested in anything from the planning board to um, education to natural resources commission, I mean, they can do it. They don't need to be have been a town meeting member in order to do that. Mm -hmm. If you've got a passion, genuine interest, think about it. Talk to other people who've been involved and um, it would be great to have you there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I quit running, so, and I didn't have anybody to advise me, so I, I quit running. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get recycled. It, no. Well, I, 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 had a, I had a nice 20 year run on the as town meeting member. Well, thank so you. I, I, think that, I think that's sufficient. Thank you for your service. And Did you yes. get a little sticker or a little pin? I didn't or get anything? it. I didn't get it. No, even, I was a town not meeting. Not even a goodbye. <laughs> I was a town meeting oh, for, member for probably 20, 25 years. I don't know exactly. But yeah. I, at one point, decided that maybe it was time for somebody else to come in and do it who was on the younger side. So uh, I just stopped. Well, that's what happened to me. I lost my two holes. So. Oh, oh. <laughs> and the There's always the, next oh, time. Oh, they all look younger. <laughs> There's 
there's always next time, Richard. But it's good to it's good to have uh, have young people in get into the the, the process, and uh, and I think that's uh, that's one of the problems that uh, we have in this town is that we don't get enough young people involved in these processes of participating in in, in town government. But we have a couple of really young ones this year coming in. Oh, um, where, where, school where? committee. School probably committee will yeah. probably be then one of the youngest. People get interested in this town through the schools, I think. Yeah. And that then leads them to other things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Within the schools, we have voter registration efforts of the league. Mm -hmm. um, the state league sponsors various kinds of contests that have evolved over the years for high school students from essay contests. Um, to video contests. This year we're having a public service announcement contest. Mm -hmm. um, deadline for entry, March 31. Very nice grand prize. And uh, it's a great thing to do. And this is a, a PSA. Um, we're asking high school students to produce on uh, Why Vote. Mm -hmm. So um, it's fun to get them involved. And the State League also has a civic education project going on where we're trying to bring more uh, materials into the schools that want them. Um, to help uh, kids <laughs> learn about voting. And then on another front, we have uh, various um, voter registration uh, efforts going on in towns that don't have leagues, and we have um, leagues adopting other communities. Um, Wellesley, we were one of the first, um, or the first to uh, bring our services into a voter registration into Framingham, which has minority mm -hmm. population. So we wanted to um, you know, do that to encourage uh, them to to register to vote. Mm -hmm. And then on another front, we're now having a, um, a uh, something I developed for the State League, but it's gotten a lot of national attention uh, from authors as well as um, school teachers, um, mm -hmm. as uh, League Choice Books. So we um, choose books for kids and high schoolers that, uh, that deal with voting and election and running for office. And uh, that are uh, that would appeal to you know diverse readers and um, help encourage them to think about uh, not only uh, becoming responsible, educated voters, but also running for office. So we're very proud of these <coughs> efforts, and other organizations are doing such things as well. And as a notable, noticed fact that uh, minorities don't participate in, in town government. And uh, 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 is there any understanding of why? I, I know that the <coughs> moderator. Sorry has had some discussion about how to go about recruiting mar uh, minorities for to serve on the, on the <coughs> committees that she has appointment mm -hmm. power for. Uh, and we had that discussion <coughs> with at least uh, three or four people from the town, one, one mm -hmm. of these panels, where we talked about the various uh, areas where there are appointment possibilities <coughs> and why. Uh, the, nobody seems to have the answer, but we've lost a, a lot of very good prominent uh, black members, uh, one who served on the, on the uh, uh, what's, what's the advisory committee, oh, mm -hmm. uh, two, two served on the advisory. <coughs> one was the guy who ran the digital plant in Roxbury, and the other was a BU professor. And uh, as far as I know, there was one, I think one, one Asian that served in town meeting uh, when I was in town meeting, only one. There have been at least uh, three uh, black members in town meeting. They mm -hmm. still have a black female in town meeting. Uh, and that's pretty much it. There was somebody on planning for a while and didn't stay very long. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, uh, minority, but, uh, minorities are a small percentage of the town population. And uh, the ones that I know that I just mentioned uh, have have national prominence. So uh, doing They're doing busy. local doing <laughs> right. local local politics is not in their failure particularly, but so do so do some of the people who do participate who have prominence national prominence. And uh, so uh, we tried to work on that for a while. You got any ideas on how to, how to encourage or get minorities to participate in town? I guess government? some of it might be just personal. No, the personal invitation. Sometimes people are reluctant to do things unless they're asked. Mm. And um, sometimes we say, do come to the meeting, but unless we say, won't you come? So maybe we should be a little bit more personal. It's yeah, it has to be, well, there has to be an identification of people who, uh, who you can yes. ask. And I think that's what the moderator was talking about was uh, if we could identify 
yeah. the minorities mm -hmm. who may, might be interested in participating, then we could approach them. I know somehow, somewhere along the conversation it fell apart and, and we never got to that, that, that level. But uh, it would be nice to have uh, uh, a few people step forward and, and participate. Yes, absolutely. Yes, They're needed. Yes. They'd be welcomed. Huh? Yeah. They'd need it. They'd be welcomed. And they'd enrich, you know, the decision making. We need to have groups, you know, we need the um, town meeting and the boards to be intergenerational diver and diverse in every way. Mm -hmm. So um, whatever efforts can be made, I agree with Jean, though. We found in terms of growing our own membership or stabilizing our membership, I should say, uh, we've been at about 100 members for, for uh, over a decade now. Mm -hmm. um, really, the personal invitation, yep. and not vague, but very specific, I'll with a call, I'll meet you. <laughs> and you know, you'll come with me, and you'll yeah. see how it is and how you like it. Have you had any that minorities in the league? Yes, but not many. Yes, not many. Yes. <laughs> and then sometimes they do just they're just too busy, or they've moved. A couple have moved out of town. So, but there's two thousand Asians in Wellsville. That's a yeah. nice, nice group of people. Well, exactly, and we yeah. we're, we're not aware of this sort of thing really, and so yeah. some live next door, and we ask them, and they're busy or they're working or whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah. A lot of it is constant vigilance to. Well, it's one of yeah. the things that I hope we can work on someday, and uh, that's a good point. Uh, yeah. Get that get 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 moving in that, that area of diversity, which yes. is uh, my my big thing. We would, <laughs> we would love for uh, to have more diverse members. You know, within the league at the state level, what we're doing is we've just. Um, strengthened the Worcester League. Um, the Springfield League is forming now, which is. Um, uh, you know, virtually all minority, it's just absolutely okay. wonderful. The mayor of Lawrence, to his great credit, um, just asked whether uh, a league could be formed in Lawrence, uh, which has a very diverse community, um, primarily Spanish speaking. I've been up there with uh, lawyers for civil rights under the law to monitor elections um, and um, have seen what a difference it makes to have, you know, to have civically engaged groups who speak the same language as those voting are there to help them and to organize programming for them. And mm -hmm. so the league hopes to make inroads in uh, Lawrence as well. Yes, mm -hmm. but it's very important and we should have more um, done here at the local level and we'll try. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 a, it's a work in progress, I think. Well, one hopes. One R hopes. Richard, how did you get involved, may we ask, in the how did I get involved? town government? Yes. Well, it's a very interesting story, and, and I, I think the town would like to forget it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it happens with, like a, it. with a fellow by the name of D. Brown. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. We're you familiar remember with D. That. Brown? Yes. All right. You want to hear the whole story? <laughs> okay. D. Brown came to town. D. Brown is a uh, the Afro-American basketball player who was uh, drafted by the Celtics. Uh, he came to town. Two or three days before he came to town, a black gentleman had robbed the South Shore Bank, which is on Washington Street, across from the post office. He happened to show up two days later, and the clerk in the bank identified him as the bank robber. Uh, unbeknown to her and the town, uh, eight police officers surrounded him in his car. <laughs> Well, they learned, when we learned it was Dee Brown, the, the black community went up in arms. And some of these prominent people who I referenced were in, in town hall shaking their hands about this disastrously act on, on the part of the town. So they set up a committee. And the committee was, was, uh, was uh, only two selectmen because you could have no more than two or it would have to be a, an announced meeting, a published meeting. And uh, there were, oh, three or four um, black residents and the police chief and uh, uh, a few other luminaries that were on the committee. And so they started meeting. Well, somebody found out that when I, was, when I lived in Michigan, I had worked with the Michigan Civil Rights Commission. And they called me and asked me if I'd like to be on committee, which I did. Uh, I'm there because they want to talk about uh, starting a human rights commission. 
And the young man who was a chair of the little committee that I was on uh, decided to move to Natick. And that made, meant I had to handle the business of, of the police community, of the Human Rights Commission. A professor from, from Wellesley College by the name of uh, Selwyn Cujo was given the task of forming a committee to talk about a police community relations committee. And we met, and we met, and we met. And then they, 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 they broke us up, and they decided to form a study committee. And I'm a, I'm a veteran of the civil rights movement. And I, we always knew that any time someone said study, that nothing was going to get done. Ah. <laughs> the, word, the moment the word study came out of the mouth of, the, <laughs> of whatever government officials were, they were in, that you could just forget it for, for, for whatever it worked, whatever it was worth from there on. But anyway, they set up a committee for the Police Community Relations Committee, and they set up a committee for the Human Rights Commission. And uh, my good friend Tony Parker was on the board of selectmen then, and Tony Parker joined that committee along with, uh, it was, I think, 11 people, well split among black and white. And, and because I had been a, a key factor in the process, I was elected chairman probably the first black chairman of any committee that Wellesley had ever <laughs> paneled. Mm -hmm. And we met, and we met, and we met, and we met. We met about nine months. And uh, we, formed a, we formulated a 600-page document, which was our report to the Board of Selectmen. And we took it to them. Well, we went, we went before them. Now, Selwyn has this huge, deep voice which is very threatening when he gets angry. And they said to Phil, what is, your, what is your recommendation? He told them the recommendation. And they started talking about study. Well, they didn't get to give him a study committee. He, they, they voted immediately for the Police Community Relations Committee. <laughs> and I have that kind of command. <laughs> so I got a committee. <laughs> Anyway, we took the we took the, uh, the the report to them, and uh, they started talking about unwielded power that this human rights commission would have with subpoena power and enforcement power and et cetera and et cetera and et cetera. And uh, I won't name the people, but there were two or three people who were vehemently against this, this whole process. So my study committee went out the window. <laughs> In place of it, they put together a human relations committee uh, made up of some, made up of the chairman of the board of selectmen <laughs> and a few other people who were in power, which lasted about six months, I guess. And that was the end of it. Well, someone said to me, you ought to run for town government in that whole process. And I, I, got, I, put, I got my petition and I got my, 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 all of my signatures to run for board of selectmen. Oh. And I'm sitting one day and I said, I don't want to do that, you know. And the, I, I went to the, the, select, the, the, the what's the secretary's office? No, the, the town uh, clerk. town clerk's office. <laughs> and I said, take my stuff and put it in the bottom drawer. And give me another petition. And that's when I signed up for town meeting. I was mm -hmm. elected in 1992, town meeting. Yeah. And I was elected every year thereafter, and I, I sat among I sat in the middle section, where, which was supposed to be the education section. <laughs> 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 That's the story. Now I don't know whether you want me to air that or not with this with this discussion. Fascinating, no? It's but yeah, also, yeah. the world of Wellesley came out of that. Uh, the world of Wellesley, uh, yes. Uh, there was a young woman, young uh, Filipino woman. Uh, who, who used to come to all of our meetings mm -hmm. when we were doing the Human Rights Commission mm -hmm. study, who decided to, to, that the town needed some discussion on the subject. So she, she, she uh, incorporated, the world, her, her husband was a lawyer, so she incorporated uh, the world of wealthy. It was not initially meant to be a thing for public consumption. It, mm -hmm. it was supposed to be her thing. Mm -hmm. And anyway, she did that. and. That was in uh, 1993, 
93, well, 92, 1991, mm -hmm. because I didn't join the World of Wealthy until 1994. And when I joined the World of Wealthy, uh, not knowing uh, the, the inner thinking of the formulator of, or the founder of this organization, I uh, and, and got a couple of people who I knew very well, uh, uh, Jane Batista's wife, or yeah, husband, I mean, who was a lawyer, yeah, and uh, I talked to him, I said, well, why don't we, why don't we incorporate? And uh, a few other people, I got uh, Martin Walsh, who at that time was the uh, director of the, uh, the office for the Justice Department, who was set in on these meetings we, like, we were having for the Human Rights Commission. And we came up with a few other people, and we started formally, we started incorporating. 1996, we incorporated with tax-exempt status. And uh, that was the year that I became the first chairman. I was co-chairman for the first two years with Terry Tedesco. And then I became the chairman. And for 17 years, I was either the, ch either the, the, the president, the chairman, or something else <laughs> that for, the, for, for 17 years. And no one had ever heard of an organization having anybody sit in the top seat for that long <laughs> in policy. <laughs> You're emeritus now. What? You're an emeritus, Chairman emeritus now. of the board. Yeah. So I, I, I sat there and I did, you know, we carried, we carried on quite well. We, we, okay. we had a lot of fun, what we were doing. Uh, what's happening now is a very interesting thing. The way we were looking at things that you bring people together in activities. And in that way, they get to know one another and, 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 mm. and, and find common ground and good ways to talk. The way the organization is going now is educational and action, more direct action, which is very good because, uh, as a matter of fact, some people were very unhappy with me because I didn't do more direct action type of uh, things when I was chair. But, uh, but I, think the, I think it's going to survive, and I think it's going to be, be quite well for the organization. The new new diversity summit uh, attracted uh, almost a hundred people this mm -hmm. year, and that's that's a good thing. And what came out of that summit? Hmm? What came out of the summit? Uh, a lot. Uh, uh, since I was not there, uh, I can't tell you exactly what uh, what what the content was or what the final uh, final uh, determination was and what what they were discussing. But uh, there were a lot of people, including the police department, including the superintendent, mm -hmm. and a lot of other people who were in the, in the right positions to, uh, to act on whatever came out of it. Good. But every organization needs to evolve, and um, that's what we need to do, too. Yeah. And there are some changes, I think, in the league, and um, that's why new, younger people will have a different way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. And. Um, Sometimes it takes a long time to, you know, change, but, you know, once you're a solid organization, um, it, you can build from it. All right. Well, even though I said at the top, that we always went through, I think we must have gone through most of Wellesley. <laughs> we had a lot of good people on, on, on the board, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, when Tony Parker came on the board, he uh, des decided that we should change the organization from the way the organization functioned. We used to have a board of directors and a planning committee. Uh, the planning committee met monthly and the board of directors met quarterly. Uh, when Tony came on the board, Tony decided that we should not have a planning committee because he didn't need it. And we should meet every other month, month instead. So we ended up meeting every other month, which was, and the board became the planning committee as well as the authorized authority. <laughs> well, that, that's something that we also uh, we used to have a lot of meetings, Richard, but people cannot attend all these meetings now. No. So we, we have a few, and we have a, several public invited um, speakers, mm -hmm. and that's how we're operating right now. Well, we only had members of the board come to our meetings. We, we, we were putting on programs, so we didn't have to. Oh, yes. Yeah, we, were, we, we, had, we started out with putting on symposia, and then we went from symposia to uh, the Martin Luther King breakfast and, and a whole variety of other things. We put on a, in, in, 90, in 1994 at Babson College, we put on eight different activities mm -hmm. in one day. 
Oh my. Oh yes. <laughs> entertainment. Absolutely yeah. good entertainment. Now, I remember going to Wellesley College and having a booth for the League of Women Voters, mm -hmm. and then there was a dance group. Yeah, you guys were always we there, were, yeah. We were there. But, um, you know, it was interesting to see what the other groups would do in their costumes and how they danced. And mm -hmm. they were, I guess, Chinese background people, and yeah. they had beautiful outfits, and uh, mm -hmm. there were people from other countries, too, yeah. with their traditional dances or whatever. Well, this is good conversation. I think we've exceeded our hour. <laughs> Okay. Well, we should invite you to become a member of the League of Women Absolutely. Voters uh, after I all this talk. I will consider that seriously. And um, I was thinking that, um, I don't know why we never did, but that's true. We, we get caught up in the League of Women Voters. Uh -huh. But um, I think most of the men who have joined have been spouses. <laughs> all right. Yes. All right. Including John, your spouse. Yeah. People yeah. that you, you People that, that, you that we own, know. That you, that you own. <laughs> yeah, so that's sort of, you know, not quite the same, but, you know. Well, I want to thank you for coming. Thank you. Know, you. Uh, this is, uh, you've given me a good conversation, and you let me talk some. I'm not sure I'm going to let it all play out, but. You have well, we hope you do. <laughs> what? We hope you do. I think the viewers would be very interested in how you became involved, and it, you're a, clearly a model for the town and uh, someone to learn from, uh, especially people like us who are involved in figuring out how to engage diverse people in different, you know, in what we're doing to make it all better and worthwhile. So thank you very much. Well, I'll consider it seriously. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I want to thank those of you who are watching us. Keep tuning in because we have lots of good stuff for you. Make sure you listen to this one. <laughs> this is Richard S. McGee, and you have been watching The Learning Tree. Thank you.